721 here, Big 550 KTRS. Uh, we here in St. Louis have broken hearts over what happened in Ferguson, and we can only watch as the painful uh, video and pictures and story unfolds in Baltimore and the rioting and the looting going on there. David Curley is live in Baltimore. David Curley, can you hear me? I do, McGraw. How are you? Good. Can you set the scene for us after the first day and night of violence? Well, it is quiet this morning. Uh, it was a very busy night, a night filled, filled with sirens, fire engine sirens. There were at least seven fires overnight that Baltimore City and surrounding counties who have brought in uh, fire equipment had to put out. Schools are closed. Many businesses are not opening. The city really hoping for a much quieter day today. Was the National Guard, we know it was called up, was it actually out on the streets last night? They are out on the streets this morning. Uh, 5,000 uh, National Guardsmen uh, moved in overnight, and we are seeing them out on the streets. A lot of uh, state patrolmen and, and police officers from surrounding county as well, a much bigger force out in the streets. And as in Ferguson, and I'm sure all your listeners in St. Louis know this, this is a, a, a multi-block area. This is not the entire city. You know, this hasn't spilled into downtown. This is uh, up on the west side of Baltimore. Uh, one of the things we learned here in St. Louis was that there were, and it was hard to gauge how many people were doing the uh, the looting and the robbing, and but there were significantly more people out there filming. Can you give us a sense of how many people were actually throwing rocks and actually causing trouble, and how many people were just standing by with cameras watching everything happen? Well, there were a lot of people involved. I saw this as two separate incidents yesterday. The first one was uh, a number of high school uh, young men who, uh, a metro stop, three high schools kind of pour into this metro stop, and then the, the students get on their buses and go to their houses. And there was some social media chatter about a quote-unquote purge. That, that was the first standoff I think you saw between Baltimore police and, and, and those protesters, demonstrators, or as the mayor calls them, thugs. And then a little bit later in the afternoon, it moved a little bit, and, and that seemed to be fewer students and more young adults. And that's where you saw the, the drugstore that was uh, looted and, and it started on fire. The police cars uh, ignited on fire. Uh, that's the, the, I saw it as two separate incidents. Uh, yeah, there were plenty of folks with cameras. Did you see the picture of the mother who came out, saw her son on TV, and pulled him out of the, the protest early. Uh, that was quite a striking image. I we were talking about that, and she probably sh should get the Mother of the Year award. She, um, she was wasting no time. I, I, uh, uh, her son got quite a lesson yesterday. Yeah. what uh, We've heard 15 different police officers were injured. A any uh, major injuries to those police officers? Yeah, 13 of them were treated and released, but two were hospitalized. Um, earlier in the day, they said uh, one of them was unresponsive, uh, they did not give us a, a clear indication of, of how they had progressed, and we believe they both stayed hospitalized overnight. We're waiting for an update this morning on those two officers. Uh, but w when you hear unresponsive, unconscious, uh, those are concerning uh, descriptions of an officer's condition after those riots. Yeah, because you saw so many of those rioters, they were like throwing cement blocks at officers and doing a lot of this in the daytime. What are they going to do today to prevent what happened yesterday well there's so much more force out there on the streets today uh... it's going to be hard f for anything to get going um, you know there is some discussion of whether or not baltimore had enough officers out there it was the funeral of freddie gray yesterday they knew the tensions were going to be high but the, the city was also thinking if we make it a big police presence that could be more of a problem than not so there'll be a a lot of discussion about that as well. Uh, I, I expect a much different day in Baltimore today. You know, it's it's interesting because here in St. Louis, the criticism was there was too much force on right. the on the streets, which is why they rioted. And now in Baltimore, they're saying there wasn't enough force to stop the rioters. Right, right, right. I think I think you'll hear that discussion back and forth uh, over the next several hours. I will say this: that the police were adamant last night that they're not going to allow it to happen again, and. They were asked about the looting and, and some of the fires, and they were quite clear to say, listen, we have a lot of good video. We shot a bunch of video, and over the next days and weeks, uh, we're going to go after those people who were looting and, and going after our officers. It seems like the governor, and the governor is a Republican. The mayor seems to be a Democrat, and it seems like they're actually working on the same page. Oh, I, I don't think this is a partisan issue at all. You know, this city and this mayor has tried over the last eight or nine days after the death of, of Freddie Gray to try and um, 
give protesters their ability to use their First Amendment right, and, and that's where some of this, this criticism is going to come, is did, did she open the door too much to where it got to the edge and then it went over the edge? Uh, that'll be the discussion. But, yeah, everybody, uh, honestly, you will see a much different day in Baltimore today, uh, a force multiplier of, you know, five, six, seven times the amount of law enforcement and National Guardsmen on the street. David Curley, the original uh, Freddie Gray story, uh, we know he had his his neck severed or sign, his spine severed. Do we have spinal, a... Severe spinal injury. That, that's the, that, that, Unfortunately, it's, uh, I don't know that he, <laughs> his spine was completely severed. That's something that his attorney has said. Police have only said a severe spinal injury. Do we have any idea, or is that still under investigation? Right? We, we, we're still sort of in the dark over as to what happened, right? We are slightly, yes. Um, the situation is that the uh, medical examiner has uh, been asked to expedite, and I think the response was we do our job uh, the same way every time, and we may not see a, a full medical examiner report for some time. They had said that the, they would have answers this Friday, which was two weeks after the death. They've now kind of said we may not have that answer. Uh, the mayor believes that something happened in that van. Five of the six officers involved have talked to police uh, about what happened. They talked the night of the incident. One has not, uh, using his constitutional right not to self-incriminate. Um, yeah, we're waiting. And the, the sooner something happens on the investigation and they have some answers, it will be a release valve of some sort here in the city of Baltimore. And then last question for you, David Curley. Did I hear that Al Sharpton is on his way to Baltimore? I don't know. Okay. If you did, you did. Okay. All right. Uh, <laughs> All right. You uh, haven't heard anything yet, though. I work for ABC. Okay. <laughs> David Curley. <laughs> yeah, live in Baltimore. Thanks, David, for checking in. You're welcome. Girl. You yeah. got it. 728 here. Big 550 KTR.